Um, I think it's because I wanted to play Minecraft, and Bumblebee's been kind of slow. All right, I'm gonna blame the projector at this point because I can't actually test it with the other setup in a reasonable amount of time. So it's just gonna be small. That is, if this doesn't turn into the XKCD situation where it's 3 a.m. and like I think I can solve the problems by reinstalling FreeBSD. Hey, that is actually a good idea. What is? Hey Pete. Yes. Let's see if you can hook up yours, if I can get yours on the thing. And then I can share a TMUX yes, session. My what? What are we going to do? Then I can share a TMUX Oops. session to you. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, we need to get a little bit this way, by a foot. All right. Because you are using an older ThinkPad and probably is using Intel, which means it will work. It might. If it doesn't, then at least tried. Um, All right, now there's some key on there that might match it. Somewhere. Connect. Actually, yeah, right here. No, it's function. I tried to I love you, Intel. So when you go out there and you build your next computer and you realize that the Intel chip costs twice as much as the AMD chip, at least their graphics drivers work. Do we want <laughs> carrot browsing on or not? No. This depends on... No, you accidentally hit us up. Oh, did I? Okay, no. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. This thing also doesn't boot with Intel without no APIC. Mm. Okay, so... So we're going to do what? You're, I'm going to uh, open a terminal, and I'm going to SSH into from your machine into mine. Ah. And then... Um, Oh. Open a, a screen session. Oh, awesome. well, if that's all. Okay. I'll, I'll do all the work. Just open a terminal window for me Just if you can. Open a terminal work. Yeah, I think I can open a terminal with system tools. Oh. Well, damn it. Wait a minute. Isn't that how it usually, how it usually goes with Linux debug? Just right. open a terminal window and I'll fix it. Well, this, okay, there it is. No terminal APIC. Window. Terminal's open. Start a I O M M U. The password will change next time. <laughs> is it Intel I O M M U? I think it is. No. Uh, 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 all right. Are we on the same network? Are you on? I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's see, should I be looking at the screen here, or should I be looking at this screen here? <coughs> uh, I wonder if... Nope. Yep, and I'm listening for SSH connections now, changing my password. Okay, my IP address is 192.168.0.13. Oh, so he's on the network. And mine is... Um, okay. Not up currently. Because it just rebooted and I'm not using... <coughs> uh, work manager does not always start. <laughs> I wonder if I have to re-authenticate. You know what would have been useful? I should have brought a switch, because I don't actually need the internet for this. What's your username on your system? Dylan. D-Y-L-A-N. I'm not on there yet. You know, I wonder... You know what's going to suck? What's going to suck? If they have isolation set up. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't think it can even read it anyway. Maybe it can. You said the keystroke logger, right? Yeah. 
Oh, well, if you got a keystroke go. logger, then you can... You get, you get this on camera? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> cool. How do you know? Because I have a pretty good memory of the on the screen and you know whatever else. It's 14. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm dot 24. Dot 24. Okay. Oh, and I don't remember what I said the password to. You sure? Uh, that doesn't look like it's working. It doesn't. Key logger command not found. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, maybe you don't have one. Oh, oh yeah. It was a joke. Oh, was it? Oh. I don't remember what my root my password is now anyway. Or what the password I just said this to was. <laughs> well, you should make it easy enough so that we all know it. Oh. <laughs> it's Mega Pants Fall by two numbers. <laughs> Well, How many combinations? <laughs> well, can't you crack it? Well, that's what you have to do. You have to make it so easy that you can't possibly forget it. And then, I don't know. Oops. Let's see. What, what happened? Bro? Oh, I bumped the darn thing. I, uh, I'm just trying to not have to hold this thing for hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, there. <laughs> Connection timed out. Oh. It's on my bag. Where did my bag go? Oh, I'm sitting back right there. Oh my god. Oh, instructor is here. Instructor fixed the needle. <laughs> don't understand that one. Yeah, you fixed it with them. They don't want the best people to teach. You know, your password is still needle before the last. If the best people can teach. My password is Mega Pants currently, followed by two numbers. You know what? My wife has an account on this machine. I think she has root access. <laughs> One's wife should always have root access. Hmm. Well, that's why she married you. <laughs> Did it do anything? Um, hold on. What was hers? Oh, uh, holy crap, that worked. Oh, you're on? <laughs> All right, let's see. Rooting my own system. So using social engineering, sort of. Nah. You're a gentleman in the SSH. SSH Dylan at. SSH Dylan. Okay, SSH Dylan 192. Uh, enter. Sorry. All right. Uh, I did it already. All right. Uh, hit Control C. Isolation. Yep. Isolation? Isolation. Is that good? Isolation is bad. Yeah. Okay, so we're screwed, right? No, no well, you can half screwed. This does not use isolation. Quarter screwed. All right. <laughs> hmm. I guess I could borrow a thumb drive, but it's, uh, he won't have the right version of Java installed on it. He won't have. Hmm. Oh crap. Yeah, thumb drive. Yeah, I might have yeah, a thumb drive. Yeah, someone can feel free to do that. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. 
Alright, thumb drive. Uh, speaking of uh, fire talks, uh, anyone that volunteers can come up here and talk for a few minutes about, I think it was at 10, yes, I think it was, mm -hmm. or 5, was it 5 or 10, I think it was 5, it was 5 at the last minute, we can do 10 though. Alright, okay, I'm going to do my half fire talk. Uh oh, oh no, what did you do? Yeah, right up the oh. All right. Um. Right. I think he's. Well, you're gonna be All right. I have a half a fire talk. Actually, this is sort of a, a little warmed over fire talk. Does anyone know a good email company? That's not a fire talk. It's a fire question. <laughs> fire question. Well, I guess not. Uh, Amusingly, Brian had asked me a similar question that yeah, do something on the board there. Yeah, you can do something. Can I do something? Whoop. Oh, okay. The thingy went away. Yeah, so I can put it back when you're done. Oh, all right. Okay. So I'm going to talk about uh, POSIX shell parameter expansion. Uh, it's an interesting feature on pretty much every shell out there. It's on Z shell and Bash and KSH and Ash and everything I've ever seen. It's because it's part of the POSIX standard. So uh, it's nifty features. If you've ever done shell programming, you probably already know you can assign a variable like this. And you can do all kinds of stuff with this part, like you can put quotes around it and, uh, you know, have special stuff inside. You can have spaces in there, so value one with a space, the quotes help you do that. Um, so that's how you assign variables. You can probably know you can also uh, reference variables. Uh, var1 equals var with a dollar sign. And the dollar sign uh, dereferences this, that variable and it will fill in value 1 into var1. Pretty easy. Uh, you might not also know that this is uh, equivalent. Var1 equals dollar with a curly brace and the name of the variable inside. So the curly braces are uh, fancy notation and uh, for convenience you usually just leave them out. But you can have the curly braces in there and that lets you have more interesting variable names too. Uh, but one of the more interesting things about it is you can do things like this. You can say var1 equals var colon dash some, some other string or something else in here. So this will assign um, the, what the, the value of var to var1. Unless var is empty, then it will substitute in whatever this string over here is. That's using a colon dash and then the string. And there's other things too. You can have colon plus. Um, and it doesn't have to be just in assignments. You can have a big long command where you're doing stuff and you, you want to put in a variable, but if that variable is empty, you want to substitute something else, you do it just like that. <coughs> it will substitute the value of the variable unless it's empty, then it'll give you that string over there. So some, so there's another one of these uh, symbols here that you can use. It's uh, plus equals. Uh, then whatever you want over here, some string. Um, and that will, uh, let me think, if this variable is not empty, it will substitute this. Seems kind of strange in this scenario. Why would you want to um, use uh, this word if this is not empty? And if this is empty, it'll um, give you just an empty string, which seems silly, um, except for if you're doing something like uh, user equals Sean. And then you can have a big long command. 
you can set up your command to be something like SCP uh, dollar sign user at some server and grab a file. But what if user is, is uh, empty and you don't want to actually use it? You can do this trick right here. <coughs> user plus equals dollar sign user at. So if you set up your command to look like this, now, if user is not blank, then it's going to substitute user at in this spot. And if user is blank, it's just going to substitute an empty string. So you won't have user, you won't have the at sign, it'll just be a regular SCP. So if this was in a script and you had a variable set up in your script to set a user, then uh, if that user wasn't set, then it would fall down to this SCP. SCP would try to, to get a file from a server and since there was no user, it would use just your current username. Uh, so that's pretty handy. So plus equals substitutes this part if this is <coughs> empty. Plus dash substitutes this part if this is not empty. All right. Uh, Finally, there are things that uh, work kind of, I don't know if you've ever used TR or said <coughs> to, to sort of chop apart bits of a string. Like if I wanted to just have this say value or if I didn't know what that said, but I wanted everything before the first space of some string, then I would say, uh, um, let's see, var one equals, um, I'm gonna use these curly braces again bar and then I'm going to have something there and I'm going to end my curly braces here. So in here there's uh, there's four different things you can use. There's a, a hash, a double hash, and a percent and double percent. Um, and the hash means remove the shortest possible prefix matching whatever comes after it. So if I have a hash and then just a space I'm going to represent it like that. Um, and then a star. This space and star is a pattern like you do in shell grabbing when you're looking for files. The star will match any letter. Um, so this will match any phrase that has a space before it. And the, the hash symbol says to remove uh, the shortest prefix from whatever. And then uh, let me see what I'm doing. Okay, so, and we're referencing var. So var is value space one, and we're saying we want to dereference var, except we want to cut out the shortest prefix that is a space followed by anything. This, this part right here is the space followed by anything, and it's going to chop that part out and substitute just value. Um, if we had three words here, value one, two, then if we used the single hash, it would get the same value. It's the, no, it would, it would uh, let me see. <coughs> the shortest prefix matching space and the star. Nope, I'm doing this wrong. Sorry, guys. What I just said would be the shortest suffix matching a space and a star, that's what it's going to remove. This is a suffix that matches space star and it will remove that and give you value. And if you had three words, then the percent space star would remove the shortest suffix with a space that matches space star, so that would be the space two. And if I had a double percent there, it would remove the longest prefix that matches space star. And that would be this space followed by everything behind it, one and two. And uh, the hashes do the same thing except for they remove prefixes. So if I had uh, hash star space there instead, it would remove the shortest suffix that matches any letters followed by a space. So it re would remove value space here 
and substitute one space two. And if I used the double hashes, it would remove the longest value that matches uh, any letters followed by a space. So that would be this value space one all the way up to this space, and then it would substitute two in its place. That's bash parameter expansion, or POSIX shell parameter expansion. It's available everywhere that there's a shell. Get this off of the screen. Yes, it doesn't. Okay. Well, well, there we go. All right, and I just got to do one thing. Hmm. Are you. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see anything because my color scheme is different than, than that terminal. Your polar, your color scheme. Uh, solarized look good on everything. <laughs> <laughs> it does, except when you don't have a solarized thing. So your typing isn't showing up here. What? Your typing isn't showing up here. You don't see? No. <laughs> you must have lost the connection or something. Oh, I'm not in that window. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to. Yeah. Well, we, we really don't want anything wrong here. Oh, um, okay, so that should work. Oops. All right. There we go. That's like roughly normal colors. <coughs> okay. Just um, T Mux at. All Hello. Right. I'm seeing okay, it's working now. All right. Hey. All right. I just always like doing that oh, when we're having oh, the screen. Well, that's yeah, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so uh, I have some files here. So. This is totally a hypothetical situation, but you, hopefully you can apply this to a real-world situation. You see everything. Uh, I, what you see before you is a very, very stupid and simple um, C program. I actually added some things to this because I was trying to break JMA because I, or JNA because I wasn't certain if it was doing things the right way. But that's not important right now. So here is a C file that defines a routine named hello that prints hello and whatever you pass to 